Hello guys, so I created this uh, external, this object that lets you edit uh, your shader files in the max format, so the JXS format that uh, Max uses to work with shaders. So let's see how this works, let's actually start from scratch and let's delete this folder. So I create a new folder. So also empty the trash. So I create a new folder called this test and uh, I create a new max patch, save it, it's important that you save it, call this text to, put it in the test folder, open the patch and, start, and then I copy this uh, little objects that I created before. So we have a JIT world to render, a JIT grid shape with uh, the shader applied, the shader name is S1. Then I have a GTL texture called the text zero. Rectangle is set to zero, so it's not going to use. Uh, it's going to use normalized texture coordinates, and uh, I have a JIT noise just to create um, a texture. So this texture looks like that. It's just some random, some random noise. So let's actually create the object. So it's called GGL Shader Editor. The arguments are the name of the context. Then it gets the name of the file that you want to create and then the shader name. So this S1 that is here, this is the name of the shader. So let's call this S1. As you can see, uh, three object, three files in my folder are being automatically created. One is called shaders dict, params dict, and this is the shader file. So let's open this object and take a look at what you can do. So, uh, the shader has been auto, uh, already created and can be applied to the grid shape object. It's just displaying uh, the object with a pink color. So, let's take a, a look at the file. If you click on this button, open shader file, you can have a look at the automatically created file. So, we have all the formatting for the shader, for the JXS file. Uh, we have uh, two varying variables, the text coordinates for the first two texts that gets passed to the Fragment shader. This is what you have by default. So let's say that we want to apply this texture to the cliche object. We have to create a, a uniform for this shader. And to create a uniform, you can do it instead of uh, creating a bind object, param object, bind it, and then create a uniform here. This is now automatically done by the editor. So if you want to create a texture, you put the name of the texture, for example, text zero. Choose the type that is sample 2D and the index of the texture that is zero. Then you click outside of the editor in this blue area and the, the uniform gets automatically created. As you can see, it says that it's not able to bind it because it's not been using, used already in the fragment shader. So let's take a look at what happened here. Has been created a parameter with the name of the texture, the type that we choose. Uh, sample 2D is actually int type and then uh, is at, it has been pinned to the fragment program and in the fragment program has been created uh, automatically this uniform with the type and the name that we choose. So to edit this shader you can open the fragment shader here editor. You see that there is a uniforms field here and a fragment field. Uniforms field is not to edit, it's just to display the uniforms that you have in your shader. So to edit, you can go into the fragment shader and say, for example, back for call, it's equal to uh, texture 2D. It's not test angle, uh, texture 2D rectangle because we select text to uh, rectangle zero here. I will add the texture 2D rectangle uh, uniforms in the next version probably. So uh, let's uh, select our text to this text zero and put our text code zero that get automatically pa uh, passed from the vertex shader and let's use this as the color for our object so you click here to update the fragment and now the object has the texture applied if we go into the vertex shader we can edit the vertex shader as well not going to do anything useful here, just add an internet, uh, an, in, an integer variable uh, equal to zero and then click to update and the vertex gets 
uh, updated, the file gets updated. So if we want to add, uh, for example, uh, a float uniform to the vertex shader, you do something like this. The default value that you want for this uniform, then you click here. And these are being created for the vertex shader. So then you can, for example, assign this um, uniform that has been created to some variable. And then, oh, this must be float. Good. And this is how you can edit your shader. So, when you are done, you close without saving here and you save the patch. When you open your patch again, you have your, you have your uh, shader still here. Shader file is still there. Uh, these uniforms are here. If you want to delete a uniform, you are done uh, with a uniform, you want to change something in your file, you click on this. And now the uniform disappears from your file. Gives you an error because the, uh, the time variable here has been declared, it's been used but not declared. So you go into the vertex share, you comment this out, and now it works again. So this is how it works. And if you have suggestions, please let me know. If you find some bugs, please let me know. And I hope this is useful. Thank you guys, and thank you girls. There are girls. Yes. <laughs>